Beyond Good and Evil ends with a short section of Nietzsche addressing a farewell to his own thoughts. He addresses his thoughts in parting and notes that formerly at the beginning they were colorful, they were young, they were malicious, and now he sees them grown up, mature, they've become immortal, they've become decent, they've become dull. And he says, Some of you, I fear, are ready to become truths. And there's this interesting contrast between the, the kind of fixedness and boringness of truth, as Nietzsche has redefined it, and the high energy and mystery and of, of the sort of pre truth thoughts out of which he has composed this book. It was always so, says Nietzsche, for, for we mandarins of the spirit, we with our Chinese brushes, for thinkers who work on the edge of what can be said, who try to grasp thoughts that are on the edge of passing away, because only then, at the very end of their life, can they be caught by human minds and immortalized in words, uh, a bit like a, a falling star about to be extinguished as it, as it hits the ground. No one, says Nietzsche, will ever guess how these thoughts looked in the, in the morning of their youth, in the full glory of their energy and initiation. As I said in the previous video, part of the indication here is that the value of Nietzsche's philosophy is not to be found in the doctrines that it teaches and the particular philosophical positions that it defends with arguments or that it asserts. Nietzsche suggests a need to look further, to look for what could not be said, to look what maybe lies beyond language and thought. So we have here in this final section, I think, a suggestion first of a contrast between what is here in the book that we've just finished reading, and what is not here, but what could perhaps be accessed perhaps by some philosopher of the future. And there's a suggestion, I think, also of this deep reservoir of energy behind this book, something that is prior to truth, as Nietzsche has defined it here, some kind of deep reservoir of energy, connection to which will seem to be a standard for uh, any philosophy of the future, which would be meaningful. And I th so I think part of the suggestion here to Nietzsche's most astute readers is the need for them to go beyond, to go to explore and to create in a way that, that is not bound by the text that Nietzsche has given to us. So that's my discussion of section 296, the final section of Beyond Good and Evil. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.